Welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon e. Jackson. On this week edition of the program, we have interesting news stories for you. We would also be focusing on the several challenges workers are faced with in the aviation sector. We will be right back. At the presentation of documents to promote wellness of women in the workplace, organized by the Women Wing of the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, industry players from organized private sector reaffirmed their commitment towards friendly workplace for women. President of NEWU presented the national guidelines on baby-friendly initiatives in Nigeria and toolkits for workplace breastfeeding and lactation support program spoke on the advantages of having an inclusive workspace. Private sector, because as you know, we have a lot of um, employers in the private sector. And if these guidelines are successful in the private sector, it means it will be highly success successful nationwide. Oh, so that's what we have done, because when you are able to have a conducive area, an enabling area for a, 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 a nursing mother to thrive. It's going to be a win-win situation. She would be at peace and mine will be at rest because she has a, a baby close by her if there is a crash around the place and she will, be, she, will be, she will be able to give her best. Other speakers at the event stressed the need for maternal protection program and implementation strategy in the country. Another challenge is the stigma and discrimination that working mothers may face for taking time off to breastfeed. Some people don't understand it. Don't judge them. Say, why can't you give uh, SME? She's the only one here. I took SME, I gave my child SME, so they start criticizing. What's wrong? You're judging on the wrong platform. Perhaps out of ignorance. Now let's make people to understand why it's necessary. The Nigerian government too should look into that to make sure that every ministry has a place where a woman can take herself and go and breastfeed and come back to work. Because we have the younger generations coming to work and most of them are in production ages. So they should make that environment enabling for them. They should put it in the policy. They should implement it. In every parasita in Nigeria, there should be a place where a woman, they say, is it, call it a nursing room or a breastfeeding room or a crutch. According to the report by the United Nations Children Fund UNICEF titled Situation of Women and Children in Nigeria, the country records 576 maternal mortality per 100,000 live births, hence the need for workplace safety for women. Violence and harassment are a common problem in the world of work, especially with women. ILO Convention 190 is the first international treaty to recognize the right of every worker to a world free from gender-based violence and harassment. A dialogue with focus on embrace equality in the world of work is on the table at this gender dialogue session. Governments that ratify the convention are required to put in place necessary laws and policy measures to prevent and address violence and harassment in the world of work. With Nigeria's adoption and ratification of the convention in 2022, NLC says the challenge now is implementation. I therefore call on the Nigerian government, employers and the trade unions to adopt strategies for implementation of the ratified ILO Convention 190 for the realization and protection of women's rights, increased productivity, decent work and dignity of labor. It makes you happy in the one way you know you are going to a place where you are comfortable, nobody will harass you. But a lot of man power is being lost. Man power is being lost because people are afraid of going to their work workplaces because of the harassment they face. So it's also scares ourselves. The poor performance by women in the just concluded general election lends credence to the need for equity and fairness. As far as there is fair play, women will come out, women will be uh, elected. But there's, all of this, there's a cabal that is already there. No woman, no woman is allowed to come up. They feel it's a bad right of men. We are not supposed to be struggling for these things because we are equal in the society. 
Uh, like the slogan says, there is no, when there is no woman, there is no nation. So women need to come together. Women need to put their, put their resources together. They need to also ensure that men work with them because no one big tree can make a forest. Experience sharing on gender equity in the workplace and challenges of gender equity in the trade unions are some of the issues in perspective. The dialogue session is expected to come up with recommendations and strategies for attaining gender equality in Nigeria. This looks like a political rally when the elections are over. It is not a campaign work for any political party, but a movement of teachers, local government workers, and retired permanent secretaries of the state public service. This group of persons, under the auspices of Sunshine Grassroots Alliance, are sensitizing their members ahead of future elections. They move from the state cultural center along the popular Obadishida Road, Akure, to the city hall to announce their readiness to take center stage. Leaders of the group, including the former national president of Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees, Norge de Jiakinwalire, and the retired permanent secretary, Bomiye Niagewu, want members to be part of those who will be making political decisions. Teachers who have served in different categories, they have all the professions. There is about time for them to get interested in politics, and that by doing this, we will be able to bring our skill, communication skill, people knowledge, uh, emotional intelligence, our experiences to be in politics. So that is why we are using this forum to sensitize them. It's a continuous process of political education. So this group is not against anybody, but what we are saying is this. We want our people to come out and participate. Uh, you know, in those states, local government service, primary school teachers, we have all manners of professionals. We have PhD holders. Former Secretary to the Oshun State Government, Boye Gawye Badi, said past Nigerian leaders are unionists as the need for union leaders to take charge in the political space. Nkrumah was a unionist, Abinaza of Fiji was a unionist, and they did well. Julius Nere too was a unionist. So. And giving people political education and making them not to understand the fundamental right of representation is the right direction. An ultimatum was issued, uh, executed in some ways because you know there was two-day warning strike. And after the two days warning strike, we told our, our members mandate was for us to review uh, uh, with the background of interventions we got. Uh, we got intervention from the Ministry of Aviation, uh, a meeting held uh, where the Minister of Aviation uh, presided, even though he was in Saudi, it was a virtual meeting, and understanding was rich, uh, one of which was that, okay, we'll have a meeting, a broader meeting with salaries and wages, who are already, uh, already processing uh, some of the uh, papers they require to give approval to the condition of service uh, we are demanding. And again, uh, there was an intervention from the joint committees of the uh, National Assembly, the Senate and the House of Reps, which we quite appreciate having shown understanding with our positions. And therefore, uh, based on these uh, levels of interventions, uh, everything has been put on hold uh, bec uh, based on what will come up after the meeting with salaries and wages. But we are making progress. It's, uh, the steps are in the right direction. Strike is not the best option in addressing uh, challenges in the sector. As a matter of fact, strike is a setback because the loss you're going to suffer maybe in a two-day strike in that industry it might not be recovered in the next five, ten years. So they must explore other sources of negotiation, for example, social dialogue. There must be an interactive section with, between union and management, not as a result of react, reacting to initiative by management, but as a consensus building in terms of sustaining their industry. It was um, actually an issue that was um, escalated, perhaps, 
because of communication gap. Uh, that communication gap has been filled and is a work in progress. The ministry have done what uh, they expected to do, and of course, I think the union's agitations has not been against the ministry. It's against some authorities, perhaps, that have not been able to really do what they have mandate to do. But right now, I think most of those issues have been sorted out, and the ministry and the unions, the workers, are at least they, they they they've given the government that benefit of the doubt, and I think everything is in um, in progress. interview segments this week I'll be speaking with the vice chairman joint aviation trade unions forum he brought us up to speed on the reason why the trade unions decided to shift grounds and suspend the proposed industrial action he also brought us up to speed on what the association expectation is from the incoming government <music> It's good to have you on the program. Thank you. A lot has been happening in the aviation sector, yeah. uh, most especially the two-day warning strike that happened about a week and yeah. some days ago. Yeah. Um, can you bring us up to speed on why it was expedient for workers to embark on that um, industrial action? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, before we go for that, uh, before we embark on that two-day uh, two uh, two strike, we give a lot of warnings. And uh, the problem we're having by then, if you can recall, is that of a uh, condition of service. It's not ready. Some of the establishment, but it has no condition of service. It has been reviewed and uh, it's not done. And uh, consequential uh, adjustment. You can remember when there was increment in the salary 2019. So some of us actually, there's some establishment, they were able to get it, but NIMET, NIMET Nigeria Metrological Agency, they couldn't get their own. Although we got the information that uh, by the grace of God, by the end of this month, they'll get their own. But we cannot agree until we see it on ground. So those are the issues, and uh, we try, and uh, like uh, nobody listening to us. That's why we say, okay, let us just go for one strike. So for how long have you been writing to relevant agencies without feedback? Uh, we have been writing. We follow all the due process. You know, you can't just go for one strike without following the due process. We make sure that we follow due process, you know, because aviation is a delicate uh, place. It's a safety security place. So you can't just embark without following the due process. So we make sure that we follow due process, and by the time we follow due process and nothing is done, we just go for that one strike. Okay, so yeah. I witnessed the warning strike and yeah. it was pretty intense. Yeah. Personally, I had to walk a distance for me to even um, cover the proceedings yeah. successfully. Yeah. But I remember very clearly that after the two-day warning strike, there yeah. was this information that there was going to be a seven-day ultimatum, which yes, expired right. some hours ago. Yeah. Can you bring us up to speed on what the next line of action uh, the, the, the next line of action, we met with the organs and... Uh, we decided to give some time because the uh, National Assembly, they were able to come into the process. When they see the way we are going now, the Honorable Minister of Aviation also, he called us for the meeting. We have a Zoom meeting with him, with the leadership of all the unions. So we see reason why we should give a little time. And uh, because of that leadership of National Assembly come into the situation, we agreed that, okay, let us give a small time, small window so that we can discuss. And uh, there was, there's going to be a meeting with the Salary and Income Wages Commission on 9th of uh, May. So we're thinking that let us give them that evidence of doubt to sit down with them and see how it will go. And I'm praying maybe during that meeting we can be able to like, actualize all the process because uh, the issue of NIMET, as I told you earlier, uh, by all indication with the information we're getting, like they may likely get their own cross question by the end of this month. But the issue of COS, that's a serious issue. We are trying to see how it can be done. If by that nine, everything becomes okay, then we don't need to go for any strike. And if you can remember, there was even the uh, lesson workshop organized by the, both the Union and the Ministry of Aviation. And we spoke at length. Seriously, we bring the items into the table and the, by all indication, I can see that uh, there's some evidence that uh, we may likely achieve. Because initially, the problem we're having is lack of information. There's some information that we don't have, but now with this particular coming together, we are able to understand ourselves. So I believe that uh, that nine will be likely reach somewhere. Okay, so which means by the 2nd of May, Nigerians will know the next line of action from the aviation workers. But generally, yeah. if we look at one of the challenges that you're yeah. faced with, it's not just peculiar to the aviation sector. Yeah. It's also, there are so many other sectors that are even faced with it. Even some government establishments are faced with it, which is a consequential adjustment yeah. in salaries. So yeah. from your experience as a labor leader, yeah. would you say it's acceptable for a uh, minimum wage to be passed? into law and yet we have some private individuals and government in the government body or even corporate body that do not um, implement this what effect 
does this have on the livelihood of workers? How have your members been coping in general? Uh, if you look at the situation in Nigeria, the Nigeria country and the, the way our value, the Naira, the Naira value is down. If you look at that uh, 30,000, can not even take you to anywhere. In fact, can not even buy you a bag of rice, chocolates of this or other things. So need for me, I think something has to be done. We, we, we have to look at the value of the Naira first. And uh, it's, it's been too bad. For, 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 for any government in this country, other state government or local government, see that they cannot be able to pay that minimum wage. To be sincere with you in the aviation industry, I think uh, we don't have much more problem on that. Apart from the NIMET, even the NIMET, the reason why they have this issue of problem because they are still in the IPPIS. You know, they are not uh, like uh, NAMA, NC, and the, some other ones. So I think it's that's an the agency. reason. They are, they, yes, I think that's the reason. But by all occasions, the way I look at it now, the family secretary assures us, the last meeting we had a meeting with him on Zoom, he confirmed that by the end of this month, they are going to get their money. And don't forget that uh, there must be arrears because it's going to be effective from uh, 2019. So I believe that uh, we don't, I don't think there's any issue on that one. Okay, beyond yes. going on strikes, yeah. beyond going for picketing exercise, yeah. um, there's also this growing concern of yeah. workers on what their life, livelihood, what their livelihood would look like or what their well-being will be like when they retire. Yeah. As a union yeah. or as an association, are there any um, steps yeah. that the union has taken in recent times towards yeah. um, ensuring that workers plan yeah. for retirement? Yes. Uh, what we normally do uh, is that uh, there must be a training. When you're about to retire, let's say two years before retirement, they, they will take you for training. And that particular training now will now maybe above you, it'll give you a way whereby after you retire, what, what you can do. Because if you look at the whole life, is that uh, it's either 35 years or 60 years of age, you must leave the service. And luckily for us to be here with you, especially in Nama, uh, when you retire from service, within six months, everything will be okay. I don't know also other establishments, but uh, Nama, they are doing very well. And I believe that if there's any issue somewhere, we will know. So, so I believe, as far as aviation industry is concerned, when you retire from service, there's no much hiccup you can get your money in time. I'm sure of that one. We don't have much more issue on that one. Once you retire from service within six months, you can be able to. And don't forget aviation industry also, uh, there are some other establishments like NCA. When you retire from service, if you, you need to work maybe in NCA now, you can be able to go there and work for the NCA, or maybe in INCAT. So because our own field, if you look at it, it's professionalism. So the more you are professional, the more marketable you be. And you can even join the airlines and so on. So that's why actually our retirement, when you retire from the service, most of our people when they retire, you may not even know that they have retired from the service because you always have something to do. But that one does not mean you must get your entitlements, which is very, very important. Once you retire from the service, it's your limit. You must get that, that your money in time. And the, the best thing you can do is that once somebody finishes the service, pay him. Because there's no way somebody can pay at, at that state at five years of service or six years of age. And after you finish that, you start struggling to get your money. I don't think it's, it's, it's good at all. It's not good. And that the unions in aviation industry were working toward that. Even there's a board, most of our members, they are part of that board. So we don't joke with that one. We thank God for that. And I think as aviation is concerned, we don't have that type of problem. Mm. So yeah. moving forward, what yeah. should um, aviation workers expect from the union? Uh, aviation workers should expect much more for now. Because uh, the only problem we have for now, I think, is the issue of training. You know, aviation work is, is not uh, static. It's always dynamic because there's a lot of changes. So that's what you are looking for. If you are liking anything, I see is the area of that training. Because it's not just a matter of structure, but the training. The training, retraining. Every day we need that one. And they don't forget that aviation training is very costly. Most of the training we normally undergo is not even in Nigeria. The only aviation college we have for now, which is organized, is uh, Nigerian College of Aviation Technology in Zaria. They're actually doing their best. But a certain training also, you cannot get it here. You have to go outside the country. So we don't joke with the training. Because with that training, you cannot be able to, to, to make it. And also the equipment. Don't forget the equipment we are using is very costly. It's not even manufactured here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that, this is where the money is going. And uh, luckily for us, we are very lucky that the only minister we have in aviation now presently happened to be a pilot. I think he's working toward that. So, uh, so, so, so I think as far as the minister is concerned, whether we like it or not, he's working toward that. The only thing he needs to do more. Because that is not enough. So yeah. would you say that the expatriate quota in the aviation sector is, is okay? Yeah. It's not being abused? Actually, it's not being abused because you have enough expatriate and actually they are getting what they are looking for. That's why we don't normally bring people from outside. The only one maybe is, uh, I think, some foreign airlines. And if you look at that, you have to do either wait, lease. So that's the reason why you will be seeing them. But as far as we are concerned in Nigeria, we have enough pilots, we have enough engineers. So we don't need to go somewhere to bring anybody here in Nigeria. So if we have yeah. enough of professionals, yeah. would you say that the industry needs to be more robust so that we can employ more of those people? Actually, actually, certainly, 
we look to be more robust. That's why this national career, we're looking for this national career to come. And we're not happy the way it happened. It did not happen up to today. Because uh, we have enough people, we have enough engineers, we have a lot of pilots. And uh, you know, in fact, there's even some pilots we have in Nigeria that normally go outside the country. We have more than enough. So the only thing we can do, we have to sit down together to make sure that we achieve, even if it's a national career, we can achieve. We need to have a national career in Nigeria. Seriously, because uh, any time we are going foreign country, we are not happy, you know, flying. If you look at Ethiopia, you know, uh, when they start, and uh, you see the way they are, they are going. Nigeria, always, anytime you remember Nigeria, always, anytime I remember, I feel so sad. Anybody who can remember Nigeria, always, actually, is, is quite unfortunate. So, but still, we can do it. It's just about our mind. If our, if our mind is okay, we can do it. But I, I, I even appeal to airline operators of Nigeria to please calm down. Let us look at this issue. Instead of us to be going to court, you know, in the federal government and the airline operators of Nigeria, they are in the court. Let's calm down. Let's sit down together and look at this issue because this court, court cannot talk. We are Nigerians. We have a lot of resources. We have a lot of opportunities, which I believe we can be able to do it. Please, let's come back to Nigeria, sit down together, look at it so that we can solve the problem. This court issue cannot take us to anywhere. We have enough people, we have a lot of resources, and uh, the airlines, they are there, we have airports everywhere. We have people that are traveling. If you go to the airport, you see the way Nigerians are traveling, you see where they are getting the money, everything. So this money is going somewhere. So please, we need that thing, so that we can be able to salvage this country together. Right. Yes. Finally, um, let's talk about um, aviation infrastructure. Yeah. I'm very much aware that the infrastructure is not what it should yeah, be yeah, like. Correct. Um, how are your members responding to the state of infrastructure facilities in the country? Uh, to be sincere with you, we can be able to do it within ourselves if we can be, if we can be able to do it. That's why you know, the Honorable Minister is talking about this concession of the airports. You know, because, uh, because of infrastructure, any time you go to the airport, you can see that maybe things are not working. But I believe we can be able to do it. It's just about our mindset. We can be able, if, I, I'm telling you, Nigerians, we are very, very, very good. If we can be able to agree to ourselves, I believe in Nigeria that we can be able to do this. I don't go to, to, to anywhere. But anybody who's traveling, when you travel outside, if you go to Cotonou, or maybe you go to any airport within the African countries, you see the way they operate and that of Nigeria. I agree that actually there are some differences. It's not, it's not good at the same time. But I believe that we can be able to do it. The only thing we can do we as Nigerians, let us sit down, let's sit down together and look at ourselves. If I want to do good, I know. Everybody you see has a good side, has a bad side. So Nigerians, if you get a good Nigerian, they can go beyond the way you are thinking. And by the time you get a bad Nigerian, also they, go, they are doing the bad more than any, any other place. So the best thing we can do, please, try to, have, to use the goodness we have okay. in us. Because everybody has the good side and the bad side. So I'm appealing to even aviation workers in Nigeria, let us use the good side we have so that we can be able to be somewhere. But I know in Nigeria we can be able to do it. We don't need to go to anywhere. Now, this issue of uh, making our airports okay that we can be able to do it. It's just a mindset. By the time we get the materials and we associate to ourselves, we can be able to do it. Okay. Yes. I know I've said final notes, but yeah. it just occurred to me that I'm sure the aviation workers will also have their expectations yes. from the incoming government. Yeah. Um, is there anything you would like to share in terms of what would be your expectation in the next uh, in the next dispensation? The next dispensation, I believe that when they are coming, they know that uh, we don't have a national career. That is very, very important. It's supposed to be the one issue we should get, national career. Please, any government that's coming, now, let it be that number one priority. Let's have our own national career. It's not good. When, do you know that when you are traveling somewhere now, maybe in Africa, you have to go to Europe? You know? Do you know how much it will cost you for you to buy a ticket from here to America or to Canada? or maybe to even uh, European co countries, it's very costly. So if we can be, and even Nigeria, we're losing a lot of money. By the time we have our own airline, we'll be able to get, to generate a lot of revenue. It's another way of making revenue generation. If you go to Ethiopia, most of their uh, GDP is from that airline. They're getting from there. So we can do it in Nigeria. We have people that are traveling, and we have the potential, and we can be able to make it. It's just a mindset. And I believe with Nigerians. As you see me now, I believe with Nigeria and Nigerians. And I know we can do it. Yes. So all you, all my aviation workers want is a national career. Actually, what you are looking for that is national career. Then number two, also the condition of uh, maybe our working conditions, then our welfare. Because you know, if you look at uh, the way we are working now, we need to have a, you know the work. You need to have everything on ground before you start because your mind is supposed to be at rest. You, you, it's not good for you. You are working. You are thinking of what to eat, or maybe you are thinking of what to buy. How, how much are you going to pay for the school fees for, for your child? No, it's not good in that way. Aviation work, you need to have your mind at rest, so that you you are not thinking of any any other thing. You are sure that by the end of the month you get your salary. If, if the training also you have to go for your training. As at when do and you get your money as at when do. So by the time you have that one, you do the best because it's the work that you don't need to be thinking of anything because it has to be with the life. It's a concentration. They need hundred percent, and there are no there are no hungry man. 
cannot concentrate. Hungry man is always an angry man. So we need to get the welfare so that we can concentrate, so that we can do our job very well. Yes. Thank you very much for thank your you so time. Much. It was an interesting thank you, thank time you, I had so with you. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the yeah. program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijatson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth. Mm -hmm.